also known as the Adventures PA. Today I'm going to talk to you about going camping this past weekend. I went up to Newport State Park, which is in Door County. It is the only dark sky park in Wisconsin, and there was no moon and beautiful clear skies, so it was perfect for me to try out some photography. While I was there, I also took a look at doing some prototyping. What I prototyped was my coffee. As you know, it's kind of an important thing for me in the morning. My food. I was testing out some recipes and wanted to see how well they would heat up or work. I prototyped whether or not I could do some decent hikes with some pack weight on. And then I prototyped how well could I sleep in a hammock. Do I have the right setup? Is it feasible for me? Because if it's not, I have six weeks-ish to be able to get ready for the Lake 11 trail that I want to do at the end of April. So there are two types of there's two approaches to prototyping. There's the throwaway or the evolutionary and functional. What I did was functional. Outside of that, there are four types of prototyping, which is a storyboard, paper prototyping, a workflow, and then a simulation. So what I did was a functional simulation. It was in a very controlled environment. It was a mile hike from my where my car was to where I was gonna camp. And then I was just doing day hikes from there to see whether or not I could carry the weight. So. Everybody's probably interested how heavy was my pack. It was 19.94 pounds. So just under the 20, um, 20 pound goal that I had, I ended up having four pounds of food and eight pounds of water. It was quite a hike to go get uh, water that I didn't have to filter or I was gonna have to filter it out of Lake Michigan. We chose to get it from the headquarters where they had water we could just get. So with that, we arrived Friday night. The mile hike in with the 20 pounds where it's decent. It actually ended up being 32 when you added in the food and the um, water. So that wasn't too bad. It was still less than I think the 37 pounds that I had last time I tried doing this hike and I started going full bore five miles. So there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. The coffee. <laughs> I've determined I'm not good at trying to do a pour over. A friend of mine gave me an instant one to try that I hadn't tried before that actually was quite tasty. It wasn't the bitter stuff that you can normally get. So I think I'm gonna go with that route next time instead of trying to do the pour over. I just never seemed to let it steep long enough and it just tasted like warm water at that point in time, which is not really what I was looking for. So I have my solution for my coffee. The next thing I want to talk about is my hiking. So between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I ended up hiking about 14 miles. It's just a little bit short. I did try hiking with a pack on at all times. Some, it wasn't always going to be full weight because I had my, my hammock set up already done and I wasn't going to tear it down every day. Uh, there were some good hills. I wish I had brought my trekking poles and I don't have that counted in my pack gear so I think I'm going to have to take a look at that. Um, my left hamstring got a little sore going up and down the hills and I think it's because I was walking over ice and mud so the trail wasn't super stable at times. So I want to, I'll have to put that weight into account. Overall though, I didn't have any blisters, so that was a huge success for me. I did have two hot spots that if I don't take care of next time, I will end up with getting blisters, so that's the key part there. My food, I did bring extra because I wanted my hiking partner to, to try it out. Turned out decent food-wise for me. Him, not so much, it wasn't enough volume. So I did pack more food than I really needed, so I think next time, I don't think I'll need four pounds of food, and I probably won't do the full pound of water either. I'll pack less water with me, but then we'll be filtering along the way during the hike, which is good because then that builds in natural stops where I can take my pack off and just rest a little bit. Now, the key thing that everybody wants to know, how did I do sleeping in the hammock? First off, the hammock was super comfortable. I never woke up stiff either morning. That was a huge success for me. However, <laughs> it is important that you actually put your gear together correctly. The first night I didn't have my underquilt tucked up correctly or installed correctly, so it kept saving and the air kept getting in. Um, I did take some screenshots of what it looked like temperature-wise outside, as well as inside of my hammock area. What you're gonna see is the outdoor temperature got down to 20 to 30 degrees, depending on which night and where in the evening. And I was about 25 degrees warmer inside my hammock, which was really nice. The first night I was cold a lot, because of my lack of setting it up good. The second night after just doing some troubleshooting with Dan on Saturday morning, it was a ton better. I slept much better. I was much warmer. It was about 25 degrees different. Fortunately for me, it was a little bit warmer that night, but then the wind chill brought it down. So overall, I was sleeping at about 54 degrees or so inside of my hammock. 
I would like it to be a little warmer, so I want to figure a few things out on that. But overall, um, one of the things that um, we had some good conversation on is there's going to be multiple of us hiking. So what can I possibly pare down so that I don't necessarily have to um, carry all of it? I can carry some of Dan's weight or Sasha's weight or whomever may be on the camping trip with me so that we have duplicates but we don't all need to carry the same gear. We're going to probably do some maybe a gear dump and take a look at that before we go at the end of April. Um, having someone there that you can troubleshoot and work through is really important. That happens in the workplace too, right? You try something out, it may not work out perfectly to begin with. You make some adjustments and you try again. You do more testing. So overall, I thought this weekend was quite successful, although I'll, I will admit I was extremely tired. Um, the skies were amazing. If you ever get a chance to take a look and see what uh, a dark sky is with no moon and, and a, no light pollution, it's, it's pretty beautiful and pretty amazing to see. So today I'm at Newport State Park. We set up camp last night. Um, I was going to show you what it looked like beforehand. However, I forgot some stuff in the car, so I had to hike a mile back and get the gear. But now that we have it up, I'll talk about what went well last night and what didn't. So with my prototype, I want to be able to sleep in a hammock. I decided to try a hammock with an underquilt. I wasn't as warm as I wanted to be at all, and a big reason was the underquilt kept slipping down. I wasn't sure what I did wrong to set it up. My buddy who's here with me, Dan, um, walk me through some better knot tying so I can keep this side up. So in theory, this acts as a nice warm insulator that I can then sleep in like a little cocoon. The other thing I did last night, just so I could see the difference, was I have two pieces of equipment. This is an outdoor sensor and this tells me what's currently indoors and what is uh, outdoors as well. There's the two numbers. So the top one is, it says it's 50 degrees outside and 64 in my hammock. I slept with this with me. I kept it by my core body temperature and it showed pretty decent, but I was still cold. So I'm thinking that may not have been the best place to do my prototyping temperature check. So we'll place it somewhere else tonight to see how that turns out. But it will definitely give us some real statistics to see if there's a significant difference in temperature. So we made some adjustments on Saturday morning, kept the underquilt in the right spot, what we were able to do by putting the quilt in a better spot, I was able to sleep a lot better. Um, it was a great night's sleep. My back felt good in the morning. There's no stiffness. Everybody I talked to who loved a hammock camp said that it's great as you age because you don't have the hard ground that you're competing with, especially when it's frozen and sucking all the warmth out of you. So I definitely think I'm going to stick with the, the hammock next time. I need to figure out how to be a little bit warmer, so I'm looking at some analysis on an over quilt or a different version of a sleeping bag that might be able to keep me a little bit warmer. The gotcha is mine only weighs just under two pounds, my sleeping bag, so keeping it into the weight I want is going to be tricky. But then um, I also want to possibly look at lightening my backpack. The reason being is it's four and a half pounds or four to four and a half pounds out of my 20 pounds is a lot to give up just for a pack. I was a little frustrated with not being able to feel like I knew where everything went all the time. So I felt a little disorganized, which I didn't care for, and I'm hoping by doing a little bit of research I can find a lighter weight pack that's a little bit better to fit the way I hike and where I want to put stuff, that I can then be able to uh, adjust a little bit and see what I can do for that. So the uh, shelter was an adventure, and I am definitely going to keep with the hammock and just try and improve that method. So last time I showed you what my hammock and underquilt looked like. This time I'm going to talk about my actual shelter. This is technically a rain fly, but it actually turns into what's almost a tent. It has um, sides that go down really low, so you, the air doesn't get underneath you. In a hammock, the big problem with temperature and getting cold is the air goes underneath you and it sucks the warmth out of the, the bottom half of you. So by having this, the air can't get underneath me. I also have one that creates doors. So by, by closing this off, like so, I now have this part closed off so wind can't come in. It's not a wind tunnel anymore and I can close both sides off. So hopefully with a little bit of the redesign on my underquilt, tonight will be a much better night's sleep. One of the things that I'm really appreciated with the group that I had with me, they are in IT as well. I know we're a bunch of geeks, but we're fun geeks. We were able to kind of talk about what went wrong Friday night and make some adjustments Saturday morning and talk through how to make it better for all parties involved so that we could sleep better in, in the cold. 
that's gonna be like an any kind of project that you have you're gonna give something a try parts will work other parts won't you make some adjustments and then you retest to see if it is meeting your needs better or you try a different way to see if that method works a little bit better had I not been able to feel relatively warm or doable in a hammock I probably would have said nope I'm not doing it or if I would have woken up very stiff or uncomfortable I'd have said nope I'm scrapping the hammock and I'm going back to the tent and let's reinvestigate or evaluate the tent. Today's hike is all about stopping and smelling your roses. Look at the beautiful scenery we get to see today. Excellent. One of the things we're also going to look at is there'll be multiple of us on the hit, on the trail. We don't all have to have the same stuff. And one of the things that Dan said that I thought was pretty useful was if you don't know how to use a flint, which by the way I learned how to use this weekend but I still don't have the skill set, don't bother to carry it. Just carry a lighter which is pretty light to begin with or you can carry a couple different versions of matches, just keep them dry. So as long as you have multiple ways to start a fire, a flint, which you don't know how to use, isn't gonna do you any good. So. You're well aware of, I love to take photographs. So my camera was gonna be a key piece of equipment. I absolutely hated having to put my pack down and pull it out every time I wanted to take a picture. And the area was so beautiful, uh, I did it a lot, unfortunately. So what, I'm, what I did is I did some research and I found a holster that I can actually just put on and attach the camera to this. I'm shooting with the camera right now, so I don't want to um, take it off, but it'll just fit in here and it'll have easy access. It's got a cover uh, for in case weather happens with it, so I'm hoping that this will allow me to have better, more easy access to my camera while I'm hiking and get the shots without having to stop every time or take it out or keep it around my neck because that wasn't comfortable either. One of the things that I did around camp was I used the kettle. It was great for boiling water because it held a lot, so I could boil a lot at once, but it also um, had a lid on it, which allowed it to boil a little bit faster. That was great. However, because I was using a plastic cup and a plastic bowl, it, the food didn't rehydrate well. You need to keep the water really warm in order for it to hydrate well. Plus, this got to be challenging because it wouldn't collapse when I wanted it to because it was too cold. So it's nice and compact and it's lightweight, but it's not the greatest in the cold weather. So what I have already, I already had this for other camping trips, is an actual pot and basically it turns into a, a mug cup that, again, it's got a lid, it'll work um, well to keep it, to get the water boiling fast and keep it warm. But I'm hoping that with it being metal, it'll retain the heat a little bit longer to make it easier for my food to rehydrate and my coffee to stay warm because I wanted it, that to stay warm. So. That is an improvement I'm gonna make. Weight-wise, it's actually a little bit lighter to carry this than to carry the plastic and the kettle, so we'll see how that turns out. The next thing I wanted to talk about was I really didn't like having um, the fact that my shelter doesn't have a floor like a lot of tents do. So I was tracking leaves around in my gear, my gear were getting leaves in it every which direction, and I didn't like that. So looking at some setups that other hammock campers have been using is they just put down a little tarp. I didn't want to go buy another small section, you know, a smaller size tarp. So what I did is I looked around and I found a, a leftover tablecloth that's plastic that I can reuse that should work out well. We'll give it a try. I already had it. It actually weighs only a quarter of a pound, so it's not a lot of weight, and I do have the availability in my pack uh, to do that. So we'll see if that works. The other thing was is I did bring a pillow last time. I didn't bring it in my initial pack gear, but I wanted it just in case I needed it, and I did use it. This is my camping pillow normally. It's nice and tiny, but it does the, a nice job. However, it's, as you can see, it's kind of big. It doesn't compact very well, and it's about, I want to say when I weighed it, it was over a half a pound. A friend of mine recommended the Aero Pillow. It's by Sea to Summit, and I'm going to give that a try. As you can see, it's nice and compact, but this is actually only a third of a pound. Uh, packed down so it's lighter and more compact. I'm hoping that this will do the job that I needed to when I go camping. So I will be probably looking at uh, a SWOT analysis next week and in that you'll get to learn about my strengths, my weaknesses, tying knots, um, opportunities, and some of the threats. The threats will be really going over again the risk register we talked about already and how we can make it better. So join me next week.